Before I begin this video, pardon the noise in the background. At the time I'm recording this video, uh, my mom is actually pressure washing the house right now. So if you hear an odd noise in the background, that's what it is. I'm sorry for any inconvenience, but that's what you hear in the background of this video. So I hope you don't mind that bizarre little noise in the background. Now, on with my review. We got eight nominations, including Best Picture and Best Script and Best Director and four actors in the photography. Well, yeah, I was surprised. I had no idea. I mean, people ask you now when, you know, when it became a big success and so on, people ask, did you expect it to be? And, well, I obviously expected something because I told two actors they were going to win the Oscars, but whether I really believed that or not or whether I was just saying it to convince the actors that it was a good part, I, 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 I honestly can't tell you the truth, what I really thought. What's going on on my YouTube buddies? I'm Jacob with another movie review for you guys. And continuing on in my series of Peter Bogdanovich reviews, in today's video I'll be taking a look at the 1968 film, Targets. The fate of a washed up horror actor intersects with a psychotic sniper on a killing spree. Targets was released in 1968 and for many people this is the true debut film from Peter Bogdanovich. If you watched my previous review in this series, Voyage to the Planet of the Prehistoric Women, he was just brought on to do reshoots on that movie and even Bogdanovich kind of disowned his involvement in that movie which is why he gave himself a different name when credited as director. So this is considered the first true blue Peter Bogdanovich movie. And many people rate this as one of the best directorial debuts of any filmmaker. People rate this alongside you know, with Orson Welles with Citizen Kane and John Singleton with Boys in the Hood and Quentin Tarantino and Reservoir Dogs, just to name a few. And this movie was pretty fascinating. I had never even heard of this movie until I compiled my list of movies to watch in this director project. And this movie is very fascinating in a lot of ways. For one, this is one of the last on-screen appearances of Boris Karloff. And what's really cool about his story, he's essentially playing an exaggerated version of himself. Because if you know, if you know anything about Boris Karloff, Boris Karloff was mainly known for starring in a lot of classic horror movies. Like he played Frankenstein in some of those old Frankenstein movies, and he was associated with so many horror movies throughout the course of his life. And while he enjoyed the success of that, he was also burned out by that at the same time because he wanted to try other things and be a legit serious actor, but you know, he was typecast as being the horror movie icon that it was hard for people to take him seriously as, you know, your, your serious dramatic actor when I think he had that range to do so. And so the movie kind of reflects that. Uh, Boris Karloff's character, he's somebody who's tired of doing the same old shtick and he wants to retire. He feels like, you know, he's the old generation of actors and the younger generation's watching his movies and they don't think his movies are that scary. They think it's too campy and he thinks it's time to move on from acting. There's a little bit of meta comedy, I guess, with that because it's Boris Karloff and he definitely felt that in real life and he was kind of making fun of that while trying to do something different in this movie. This is definitely a more serious performance of him, but it was fun seeing that side of Boris Karloff actually give a uh, actually really commendable performance. I actually really like that. And what's also cool is Peter Bogdanovich actually has an acting role in this movie as uh, one of the film directors that Karloff's character is interacting with throughout the course of this movie. And it, it's cool when directors get to pop up and have small little acting appearances along the way. This is a movie of two halves. You have this aspect with Boris Karloff, and then there's another storyline involving what seems to be an average everyday guy with a nice family. He's married and stuff like that, but you know, one day he snaps and decides to go on a killing spree. And so there's two interesting stories in there. I think with the story with the, with the psychopath, uh, that one I wish was fleshed out a lot more. And that's what leads into my frustration with the movie is because these two stories are good on their own. 
but I don't think they're compatible together in one movie. The Boris Karloff stuff, I think, would have worked better if they were trying to make a meta comedy centered around, you know, Boris Karloff's acting career and stuff. But then it doesn't mesh well with this other story of this psychopath going on a killing spree. And because the Boris Karloff takes center stage, especially in the first half of the movie, I think it takes away some of the character development on this psycho character because you don't know why he's doing these things because he seems like he should be a happy guy who's living a normal life but he just snaps all of a sudden and I wish the movie kind of dived deeper into the madness of this character and why he decided to go crazy one day because you know so many killers you know have their motives for doing stuff like that whether they hate the world or they have older you know their mind is just messed up in so many ways and the, just the movie, I wish, dived deeper into that to where I think the turn would be more believable and the film would be, I guess, scarier to watch. But I will give it this. Uh, the final act of this movie is actually well done. Uh, that's when the two stories actually uh, converge together because Karloff's at a drive-in, the killer decides to start shooting people at a drive-in, and some pretty insane stuff happened. I'm sure this was a shocking sequence in 1968, and sadly, the scene hasn't really lost its relevance today as we hear of so many mass shootings in the news in today's day and age. So it's more of a something that you hear in a daily occurrence and it makes it all the more sadder when you watch it in 2022. The sequence is done very well. It definitely dives into the horror of what happens in a mass shooting and the loss of life and the insanity in a situation like that. And I have to credit Bogdanovich for crafting legit tension in the final act. It was actually very well done. Uh, the movie, I have issues with the fact that you got two stories that are not compatible. And I feel like each one's trying to hijack one another. Because the Boris Karloff stuff... I think would have worked better as a meta comedy and I kind of wish the movie fleshed out the psycho story to where I think it would have been more unnerving to watch. It was a little bit distracting when you got two stories clashing for attention and I wish if the psycho story was better fleshed out I think it would be a much more unnerving and unsettling experience where it will dive deeper into the mind of the character. But I'm still mildly impressed by this movie. This is definitely a better put together movie than Voyage to the Planet of the Prehistoric Women. And I still greatly respect the effort from what Bogdanovich was trying to do with this movie. And uh, to be fair, this movie actually does succeed in what it was trying to say with ha uh, addressing, you know, tragedies like a mass shooting. And it does it in such a way where it leaves the audience thinking about what would be the best response to a tragedy like this and it doesn't like bash you on the head with like an agenda or a message or anything. Bogdanovich just presents it as is and makes the audience react to, okay, this is unfortunate, so what's next? And uh, that's what I like about this. Uh, the movie is really interesting. The movie could have been better. I think the movie should have just focused on one story and I think it would have been better. I honestly, since the movie's called Targets, I think the the killing spree aspect and the psycho should have been the way to go to flesh out this character. But the movie's not bad. I've seen some people rank it as a masterpiece and one of Bogdanovich's best films. The movie didn't do well at the time, but it's gained a cult following over the years. And this is credited as the film for... Uh, having studios pay attention to Bogdanovich's work because uh, the critical success of this movie was what led to him making pretty prominent movies in the 70s such as The Last Picture Show and Paper Moon among others. So this was a great stepping stone for Bogdanovich as a director. It's a movie that's kind of a mixed bag for me personally because of the clash in two stories. But there's some good elements in there, and I still recommend it to check out some of the stronger aspects of the story, especially the finale, which was well done. So at the end of the day, I'll be giving Targets a 3 out of 5 stars, and on the 100 point scale, it's getting a 60 
out of 100. So that wraps up my review of Targets as part of my Peter Bogdanovich director project where I'm going through his complete filmography from his directing debut to his last film. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll leave a link in the description below where you can check out my Peter Bogdanovich playlist featuring the past reviews I've covered on this channel so far. I'm just getting started on this director project and the only other review currently on the playlist at the time of this video is for Voyage to the Planet of Prehistoric Women. But I got a lot more Bogdanovich reviews coming your way, so if you're a fan of this director, don't forget to click the subscribe button and notification bell so you can be notified of future Bogdanovich reviews. And don't forget to click the link in the description below for my playlist where you can check out all my past videos. Join me next time in this director project where I'll be reviewing the first of Peter Bogdanovich's documentaries. He directed three documentaries in his lifetime. The first of the three came out in 1971. He directed a movie called Directed by John Ford, centered around legendary filmmaker John Ford. As somebody who was a fan of John Ford and the westerns he made, especially in the 50s, I am excited to check out this documentary that Bogdanovich directed. So be on the lookout for my review of Directed by John Ford coming to the channel real soon. But if you've seen Targets, let me know down in the comments below what you thought of the film. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Were you mixed on it? But whatever your thoughts are, please be civil and respectful of others. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Click the subscribe button to see more content and the notification bell next to it so you can be notified of future videos. If this is your first video, besides movie reviews, I also do TV reviews, ranking videos, and other fun stuff along the way. I have some more videos planned for you soon. Hope you all have an amazing day. God bless, and I will see you next time. Goodbye!